Hello everybody, this is Dr. Morales and I would like to talk to you guys about folates and how we use them in our practice and also what kind of results we've seen. So the word folate actually comes from folium, which is the Latin for leafy or leaf, in this case leafy vegetable like spinach. We see that vitamin B9, which is a folate, mostly it is um, integrated in the leafy vegetables and when the patient absorbs that, depending on the cooking method, it can break down and the bioavailability can be as low as 40%. And so this is why the pharmaceutical industry has made folic acid available in tablet or capsule form. Folic acid uh, and folates will enter the digestive system and the duodenum and in the dejunum will be absorbed if the patient does not have any malabsorption problem and then through the liver with the MTHFR metabolic pathway will be then metabolized into 5-MTHF, 5-10-MTHF, and L-methylfolate, which are the active forms that can actually cross into the blood-brain barrier. Some patients have tested normal levels in the blood for folic acid, but in the brain, they have decreased folates, and this is because of the malabsorption that I was talking about, and because of problems in their methylation, like MTHFR deficiency or MTHFR mutations. So when you have a patient with these kind of conditions, especially children, which oftentimes have malabsorption problems and mutations on their methylation, we will ordinarily like to supplement them with L-methylfolate, for oral consumption that actually crosses the blood-brain barrier or high-dose folinic acid intravenously like we do a lot with autistic patients which are nonverbal and after these uh, high-dose folinic acid administrations they become verbal, they become engaging, they become uh, much more just uh, pleasant to be around with their families. And so what we've seen in studies is that patients that have normal blood uh, folic acid levels, uh, about 40% of them have had under or below normal levels of 510 MTHF or methylfolate or folinic acid in their brain. And so as a result, we have seen that depression, suicidal ideation, some um, early uh, dementia and even seizures get improved after absorbing the right L-methylfolate or folinic acid in such cases that can actually cross into the blood-brain barrier. Other cases like autistic children that we see when they're, as I said, nonverbal, we've seen improvement of their cognitive functions, of their social skills, and we've seen them start becoming more verbal. This is because uh, the folinic acid that crosses the blood-brain barrier not only has effects on the DNA synthesis and neurotransmitters and DNA replication, but it has effects on about a hundred different metabolic pathways that are connected to the brain function. And so that is why we have to study them, or in some cases if we can't do, for instance, folinic receptor autoantibody testing or testing of their folinic acid in the brain, we can just supplement it, it's a safe form of treatment, and we can see at least improvement in up to 40% of the cases, at least from what the studies have shown us. There are other studies that we've seen where other um, cases have improved in other types and other areas of, uh, of medicine, which just shows us the number of different things where folinic acid can be effective in. Uh, in, in our case, we, we recently presented a case study of a patient with pans pandas, which we treated uh, along with other treatments with folinic acid. And we saw that the treatment time shortened by administering folinic acid. And again, it's not a fix all, and it's not something that'll work with everybody, but it's good to keep in mind because some of these cases, it's something as easy as checking what problems are happening in their metabolic systems and then focusing on those, if it may be by checking organic acids, but their metabolites and their metabolism, things that can improve their just cellular function and cellular signaling, which in result will change the way that they behave and the way that they're just uh, feeling in general and giving us 
a, a, a good uh, uh, resource for improvement of our cases that we oftentimes have very, very little resources at our disposal. So um, that is uh, mainly all that I wanted to share with you today. I hope that this uh, is uh, a useful set of uh, resources that you can apply with your patients or with your family members. Just make sure to check these levels and if you can't, then you can always talk to your practitioner and he will make sure to do the right uh, and have the right resources uh, as well. So uh, have a good rest of the day. We hope that you enjoy this information and uh, stay safe. Mm -hmm.